Hey there, this is Nick Gregan, Headshot Photographer in London. And today I want to talk to you about why it's really, really important to choose the right headshot photographer for you. Now, that's not the right headshot photographer for your friend, and often not always the right headshot photographer your agent suggests or your management. Your relationship between the headshot photographer and yourself is crucially important. If you think about it, your headshot is still your main marketing tool. It's usually the first point of contact you get between you, the casting director, an agent, a management, producer, in fact, anybody you can positively or negatively affect your career. So what you wanna do is make sure you give the right first impression. And that first impression only takes a split second, a split second. So what we need to do is make sure your headshot is an awesome headshot and it has the wow factor. So it jumps off the page or jumps off the computer screen and grabs the casting director by the scruff of the repellers like that and says, hey, take notice of me, I'm here, look, I'm here. Anyway, so back to choosing the right headshot photographer. I was getting carried away there. I like throttling people. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. Um, back to choosing the right headshot photographer for you. I think it's really crucial that you talk to your headshot photographer before you book with them. Now, I know that it's so easy in our busy lives just to go online and book a session with a headshot photographer, book into their diary, and you know what you've done. You've paid your deposit, and you know your session's coming next week, two weeks, three, three weeks, or whatever. But for me, I don't apply that principle. I want people to email me. And I want to be able to react and interact with them in email, in my personality. And also, I want people to ring me on the telephone so we can talk. I can talk about where they are in their career, what they expect from the headshot, if there are any particular characters that they like to play or they think they've been playing. And also, you know, in particular, in respect of their career, have they been getting many auditions? Um, have they been getting called to audition for the right kind of roles they want to? So it's, I like to know these things before a person turns up. That way it sets in my mind uh, how best to approach a session. And we can chat about things to wear, the kind of shots they want. Um, we can also talk about makeup. And, you know, it just helps that little dialogue, first of all, of talking to the right headshot photographer. Now, in that first phone call, or when you meet somebody, and we've all done this, we all meet people and we can't help it, we take an instant dislike to them or we feel uncomfortable. Now that's really, really common. And sometimes it's more with women and men. Men feel, you know, men can be a bit intimidating or a bit strong. Hey, some guys can be a bit sleazy, I know that. But what you want is, if you've just already established that connection and that communication, when you arrive at the studio, you already feel comfortable. You've already broken the ice and you feel like you've got something in common. And that's when the magic starts to happen. Your headshot has to, absolutely has to, have connection, emotion and personality. Your personality, right? And if you are not comfortable with the photographer, if you find them intimidating, if they may have made... Um, funny quips that are just not funny, that or said something personal about how you look or what you're wearing, suddenly you start to feel uncomfortable. And if you're feeling uncomfortable, those emotions and those mini micro expressions, we see them in a person's face and we see them in a person's eyes. And remember how important the eyes are to a successful headshot. So you wanna feel comfortable. And then when the photographer says to you, hey, give me a smile, you're not going to feel as though you just smile like this. That grimace. Now, on stage, when you're 30, 40 feet back from people in the audience, you can get away with that kind of smile. But up close and personal in this headshot, which is very much like film acting and TV acting, where those small gestures and small nuances of looks are really critical, you need to be really comfortable in expressing a true smile. Hey get the eyes working <laughs> but in reality what you don't want is to say hey i can smile 
So you hold the smile and your eyes are flat and dead. That's the first thing. So then you need to be getting emotion in your eyes. So that little twinkle and the real feeling. And we can see those things. We communicate so much so quickly through our eyes and our first glance. So that we want those eyes to be working properly. And then we want personality. Now, if you're not comfortable with your photographer, for whatever reason, and it may even be something stupid like the studio is too hot or too cold or too noisy or they're playing the kind of music that you don't like. Well, here's the thing that's really, really important. You are going to your headshot photographer and you are paying them good money, your good hard-earned money to work for you. So you must remember the photographer is working for you. And I know there's been many, many occasions when I've seen people, I shared studios with other people as well, where people are intimidated by the photographer and people feel as though they'll just do as they're told. But this is your session. It's your career. It's not the photographer's career. It's your career. And it's up to you to get things right. So if you're feeling uncomfortable for any reason, the person who looks at your photograph is going to see that. And remember, I said earlier on in this video, your headshot makes its first impression in a split second. The average person is a split second. So imagine somebody like a casting director who's used to looking at hundreds and hundreds of headshots a week. Imagine what they see in a headshot in less time than a split second, a millisecond for one for want of a word, a nanosecond. So make sure you choose a headshot photographer you're comfortable with. Hopefully you've had the opportunity to look at their work and shooting the kind of photographs that you like, because you may find that a, a photographer is advertising things on their website, and then when you get there, your pictures are different to what they advertise. Uh, in that case, you need to say the photog to the photographer, I want this. They may well say to you, well, this is how I'm shooting now. And once again, I say, Yo, the photographer is working for you. So you say to that photographer, no, this is what's on your website. I want you to shoot this for me. This is why I came to you. This is what you're advertising. And don't be afraid to make your feelings known. You're the person paying the bills. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. Give us a like. Give us a, give us a smile. <laughs> give us a comment, definitely. And share it with your friends if you think it's going to be helpful. Anyway, that's it from me, Nick Gregan. Uh, Headshot Photographer in London, and I'm also author of The Headshot Bible, the only book in the world, as far as I'm aware, teaching actors how to get a perfect headshot, and there's 50 tips there as well, and look out soon for the awesome Headshot Blueprint, which is a course coming out soon, which will teach you how to get that headshot, and also what the perfect headshot is. Anyway guys, thanks for watching, really appreciate it, have a cracking day. Cheers now, bye.